Okay, so welcome to today's uh, introductory mobile application development class. Um, I'm recording this because of the public holiday, so you can watch this at whenever you're free. Um, today we're discussing mobile user interface design. So the overview of this chapter is uh, we're going to look at different elements that can be brought together to make up a user interface and also how do we do this in app inventor, the MIT app inventor. Um, we've got different layouts there. So um, when we talk about mobile devices, mainly we're doing tablets and smartphones. That's what we have in app inventor. So we use the user interfaces, we need to design them carefully to ensure correct presentation uh, on as wide a range of display sizes as possible. So we need to design the user interfaces uh, to be able to adapt to whether it's portrait or landscape orientation as well, as well as the tablets and phones sizes. So the tab, the palette has a, is where we get all these pieces of this, what we call widgets, to put inside your uh, screen. And these different visible components uh, on this palette, like text box, image, will be, which will be displayed on the app screen, as well as non-visible components like camera, player, which will not be displayed on the app screen, but will be used when we create backend logic. And we can use these things to design our app screen. So, here we have layouts of the uh, user interface and um, the horizontal arrangement, uh, vertical arrangement, table arrangement, all these kind of arrangements for how we want to lay out things. And then we also have the um, things like the camcorder and camera, uh, image picker, all these kind of things that is not going to appear in the screen but we put it there to be able to do things and you've already used some of these before so like the text to speech thing here and the translator and um, there's different things here that we can use um, and then there's drawing and animation where we had done uh, the canvas, the image sprite, the ball, all these kind of things and um, then with the maps, uh, circle, feature collection line string map all these kind of things which uh, we really haven't used yet in this class but you can use it in the future and then you've got these sensors where like sensing the acceleration and uh, scan barcode scanner barometer all these different kinds of sensors uh, pedometer also and uh, we've got the social media sort of things contact picker uh, email picker phone call all this kind of so uh, there's even Twitter and texting and so on. And then you've got storage. We've got cloud DB files and tiny database and tiny web database. And connectivity, which is connecting to other things. And then there are also these extensions that uh, is available for MIT App Inventor. Okay, firstly, what is mobile design? There's two big components. You've got uh, the user interface, which is the UI, and then there's the user experience, which is the UX. So the mobile app design encompasses both UI and UX. So designers are responsible for the overall style of the app, like the color scheme, the font selection, the types of buttons and widgets that you might put there. And User interfaces are actually very important because it is the presentation of your app to the customer or to the user of your, of your app. So here's one of the most popular games uh, in Android to this day, even though it's quite old now, but it, it's still very popular. Uh, this was called Angry Birds by Rovio, and it does something engaging. engaging. It provides challenging puzzles, plus you get to blow stuff up. And this isn't the only reason why it's popular, because they, they've done a lot of work in, for the user interface to be engaging and, and good. So the, the interface has how the app looks, you know, the graphic design, the typography, the, the fonts, the colors, how people tell the app what they want it to do, 
how the app gives information back to the user through the screen, speakers, or haptic feedback. Um, and like haptic feedback, buzzing the little phone's bottle so that it is like, you can feel the vibration. And then you've got um, the input that tells the user, that the, the user tells the phone to do something, for example, by touching an object and dragging. And the output, the phone does something like showing a bird flying and crashing, changing the score, playing the sound. And the process, in Angry Birds, when the user lets go of the bird, the computer inside the phone, called the processor, works out where the bird will fly and land and how the landscape will be affected. Then in App Inventor, you design the user interface first and then write the computer program. This is an example of a top-down approach. Another way of doing things in other programs is to start with the nuts and bolts of the program and worry about the user interface later, and that's the bottom-up approach. Both approaches have advantages and disadvantages, and in practice, you'll probably find yourself doing a little bit of each as you build apps. You'll spend most of your time as an app inventor flipping backwards and forwards between these three activities like this. You've got uh, design the user interface using the design uh, here, the, the designer, and then program your app using the blocks, and then testing it on the phone or the emulator, and you'll be going back and forth over these things as a result. Now, as a computer and smartphone user, you recognize a lot of these components in the app inventor's palettes. Elements like buttons, screen labels, text boxes are common in web pages, desktop programs, and smartphone applications. So because App Inventor has these ready-made elements, you can speed up the process of creating apps. So App Inventor defaults to piling the components on top of each other like this. Okay? So when you drag three objects into the screen, they will pile up like a stack of pancakes at this. And you can change the object order, but what if you want the objects next to each other? What do you do? Well, that's where the layout comes in. So one way is to have table layout where the, this table arrangement lets you arrange components in a grid, like this. You can tell only one component, you can put only one component in each cell, and if you squash a couple more in, only the last component will be displayed. So this is the table arrangement. So it's a tabular, it's in a tabular form fashion, like a grid. And the default properties for table arrangement has two columns and uh, two rows as shown here, but of course you can change those defaults. And by changing the number of columns and rows in the properties panel, you can make it uh, make any kind of grid to display information. So in this example, we nested five table arrangements inside five horizontal arrangements to display stock information. And each table arrangement has two columns and three rows to display three labels and three pieces of information. The left column displays the text label, the right column displays the changing stock information, and the three rows display the price, change, and high information, respectively. <coughs> then this image shows the stock app view on a mobile device, so you can see all the things that we talked about just now. So, next example, I will use the table arrangement component to create a 10 by 10 grid to display 100 buttons as shown in this image here. So in the block editor, by using the screen initialize block and set back button background color blocks, you can change the color of the buttons. When you do that, there is now no longer space between the buttons, see that they are right next to each other. Now, there's also horizontal arrangements. This is when you want things placed next to each other in a screen like this, left and right across the screen. And there's a horizontal scroll ar arrangement, which is basically a horizontal arrangement, but uh, it has a scroll bar so you can go, you can scroll and see the stuff that's off the screen. So, when creating certain layouts, such as our 100 button design, sometimes you see the entire UI won't appear on the screen. So you can clearly see that this column here is cut off right here, right? And actually, the last column is completely hidden over here. So this is where we need the scroll. So to solve the problem of the UI being cut off on the screen, one can add 
a horizontal scroll arrangement to the viewer in the design in the designer and then nestle the table arrangement which contains all the buttons into it as shown in this image here see you have the table and you've got all the so you've got the horizontal scroll arrangement then you've got the table and then you've got all the buttons inside This process of getting the table arrangement into horizontal scroll arrangement may be a bit tricky given that given all the buttons. So I uh, will give you a step-by-step -step process to achieve the layout shown in the previous image. First you drag the horizontal scroll arrangement from the layout palette into the viewer so that it lands above the table arrangement like this. Then to make it easier to grab the table arrangement and move it into the horizontal arrangement, we temporarily remove the one of these buttons from the table arrangement by dragging it and putting it somewhere else like put it here and then in this case we grab back the button and put it here then now we got a blank spot there that can we can use to drag the whole table into the horizontal scroll arrangement then after that we just have to put back the, the button that we have removed from, so that now it's back in there So the view on your mobile screen di display will have a noticeable difference from the horizontal scroll arrangement component added. A large, uh, a, a dark shadow along the right or left hand column. Um, and this scrolling feature allows for uh, the design overflow and enables the app inventor to expand their user interface features. The horizontal scroll arrangement for the vert or the vertical scroll arrangement provides a much needed solution for expanded user interfaces where part of the display is hidden on the mobile dis device or when the responsive sizing property displays a user interface that's too small to be functional. Okay, then there's vertical arrangement. It lets you stack components on top of each other like this. And then there's vertical scroll arrangement which lets you stack them and then scroll when it's off the screen. So why would you use the vertical scroll arrangement component when there's already a scrollable property in uh, available for each screen? Well, let's look at that option and discover the differences. The scrollable property for screen 1 or any screen can be found in the properties uh, panel near the bottom and it's activated by clicking this checkbox here. And at first glance, you may think that this property must be helpful for the app user. But soon you'll see it's actually a necessity for the app developer. When building any UI, you only have the small viewer window in which to work. But the viewer is actually much bigger than what meets the eye. To gain the full scope of the viewer and ultimately your UI, you, must, you will most definitely want to enable the scrollable pro property for whatever screen you happen to be working on. You may not find the need for it, when you just begin building your UI. But if you have a lot of information to display, you'll soon discover that you run out of space. So if you don't have the scrollable property enabled for your screen, and you add components to the viewer, you'll see them listed in the components panel, but you won't be able to access them as they are sitting outside the viewer window. Thus, there's no way to click on them and manipulate them. As shown in the example of this book club uh, app here the viewer only shows the form up to the street address and the developer cannot access the rest of the components that fall underneath but if you check the screen scrollable property to activate it a gray scrolling bar will appear on the viewer so with the scrollable property check you will easily be able to scroll up and down to view and edit the complete ui like this When developing apps, you will most likely always enable the scrollable property to aid in your app design. Similarly, if you need the scrollable option as an app developer, your user will also need this feature to navigate the UI on their mobile devices. For the user, they can swipe up so that the whole screen scrolls and the full UI becomes visible. These two pictures show the mobile devices, the mobile device before and after scrolling in portrait mode. So before you scroll, after you scroll, you can see the stuff at the bottom. By using vertical scroll arrangement, you can have more control over your UI than with, screen scroll with a screen scrollable property. 
With the scrollable feature, the whole UI scrolls, which may be useful for many app designs. But with vertical scroll arrangement, you can create scrolling for just certain parts of the UI. So here's another example. There are two columns of book choices in the Book Club app. By using vertical scroll arrangement, the user can scroll through one column at a time without moving the rest of the UI, which in this case is the other column. The image shows a snapshot of a user having scrolled column 2 while leaving the first column intact. An interesting note, if you enable scrollable property and use the vertical scroll arrangement component, App Inventor will default to the scrollable property full screen scroll. So, if you're creating a specific design with a vertical scroll arrangement that you want to feature prominently in your app, you will want to enable the scrolling property when developing your app and then disable it when publishing your app. So in summary, we've looked at the palette and the layout category and um, this lets you have uh, this gives you a, an idea of some of the options available in the MIT app.